Many of the foods, dishes, and recipes that people eat today have actually been around for decades, if not centuries or even millennia, depending on when you last cleaned out your fridge. Oh, no need to tap. Oh wow, it's like potting soil. But anything that's been around that long is going to experience massive changes, and your favorite meals are no exception. So today, we're going to take a look at what popular foods originally tasted like. Before we get started, be sure to subscribe to the Weird History Food Channel. After that, please leave a comment and let us know what other ancient versions of famous foods you would like to hear about. Okay, time for a taste of Weird History. Pizza has been around, in some form or fashion, since the days of the ancient Egyptians, Greeks, and Romans. Which is to say, Caesar may have been a customer of Little Caesar's. Pizza, pizza. But in ancient times, everything was different. Mighty heroes walked the earth, the gods interfered directly in human affairs, and pizza looked more like flatbread or focaccia. So what happened? Well, Rome fell, and pizza, like the rest of history, moved on. The food that we generally recognize today as pizza was created in Naples, Italy around the turn of the 19th century. At the time, Naples was known as a lower-income city, and just like today, the residents were constantly on the lookout for cheap, quick meals. Like za! So someone, nobody knows who, decided to put toppings on flatbreads. That person's name is lost to history, but as the inventor of pizza, we should immediately rank them among the most important humans who ever lived. Long story short, soon vendors were selling these handheld bites all over Naples. In fact, when the Italian King Umberto and Queen Margherita visited Naples in 1889, they wanted to have some of the authentic Neapolitan cuisine they'd heard of. Queen Margherita reportedly liked one pie so much, a variety that had mozzarella, tomatoes, and basil, that the pizza was named after her. So Margarita Pizza is named after a queen and not for the time someone spilled their drink on a slice. But even after receiving royal approval, pizza stayed popular only within Naples' borders until another country popularized the dish. That country? The good old U.S. of A. Neapolitan immigrants brought their perfect wonder food with them and started opening up actual pizza shops all around the U.S., most notably in New York City. Americans deemed the dish delicious rather than barbaric, and that's how the pizza frenzy that we know today was born. Tea is popular all over the world, especially in England. They're really nuts about it over there. But did you know that every variety of tea, black, green, oolong, mister, all comes from the same plant? The plant is called Camellia sinensis. Where and when the tea plant is grown and harvested affects the difference in taste. Pretty cool, huh? Cool, like iced tea. Especially when tea was originally discovered in China, it came from the very same plant that we still use today. Other than added artificial flavorings, tea has remained relatively unchanged since its creation thousands of years ago. If you're wondering who was the first guy to look at a tea leaf and think, I bet I could boil that in a mug and dip cookies in it, the answer is the Chinese emperor Shen Nung. Kind of. According to the legend, way back around 2700 BCE, the emperor was relaxing under a tree. His servant was boiling some water for him to drink, and some leaves from the Camellia sinensis plant accidentally blew into the water. Apparently, being the kind of guy who was up for anything, the emperor tried the drink anyway and found himself hooked. These days, mac and cheese isn't so much a specific dish as it is a genre of food, and there are about a thousand different varieties. You could get anything from a pricey mac and cheese with lobster to a blue box of Kraft for about a dollar. However, the origin story of macaroni and cheese takes us back to the land of pasta, Pavarotti, and the Pope, Italy. The earliest known recipe for a macaroni and cheese-like dish was for something called de lasanis, or lasagna, really. This 13th century version of the dish required the pasta to be cut into two-inch squares, cooked in water, and tossed with grated cheese, which was more than likely Parmesan. Nobody knows who made the first mac and cheese, but we do know who popularized the dish in America, founding father and Declaration of Independence author Thomas Jefferson. Jefferson's enslaved chef, James Hemings, brother of the now famous enslaved woman Sally Hemings, created the dish that we love today. Hemings perfected his casserole-like recipe while living in Europe with Jefferson, and TJ couldn't wait to show the meal off to his wigged friends. The only debate more fierce than whether or not a hot dog is a sandwich is whether Frankfurt or Vienna invented it. So the next time you get residents of the two cities together, try asking them who invented the hot dog. Looks like somebody's been down here with the ugly stick. Then take cover behind something thick, like a bunch of hot dogs. The truth is, the debate is intense because both sides have a formidable claim. 
Taking into account that Vienna's German name is Wien, both city names are prominently featured in very popular varieties of sausage, Wienerwurst and Frankfurter, and the food is commonly known as both Wieners and Franks. At the risk of taking sides in an ancient blood feud, or in this case, an ancient blood sausage feud, but Frankfurt holds the more generally accepted claim. The city is widely acknowledged to have cooked up the hot dog in the 1600s when it was known as the Dachshund Sausage. It's pretty much the same as a modern dog, except the main topping was sauerkraut because they didn't want the meal to catch on. Hamburgers are an ideal topping vehicle. Just ask the person who wrote the Big Mac jingle. Special sauce and lettuce too. But the burger's status as a canvas for topping artists is a relatively recent development. The iconic sandwich has changed drastically over the centuries. The earliest, somewhat hamburger-like sandwich appeared in the first century CE in Rome. Their minced meat sandwich had pine nuts and pepper and was flavored with wine. Now that's a burger for adults. McDonald's should have boiled the Arch Deluxe in Night Train. In the 13th century, the Mongols would store their cuts of beef under their horses' saddles, tenderizing the meat into a convenient hamburger form to be eaten later. Plus, it had that smoky horse aftertaste. The hamburger continued to evolve over the years. Based on a recipe from London in the 1700s, a burger was a concoction of minced beef, nutmeg, garlic, pepper, vinegar, red wine, and rum, and was served on toast. There is much debate over who owns the title for the first modern hamburger in the United States, which was probably made around 1885 in either New York or Wisconsin. One story holds that the Mensch's brothers of New York ran out of pork sausage at a county fair, so they put beef in a sandwich. It's also been claimed that Charlie Negreen squashed a beef meatball between slices of bread at a Wisconsin fair to make the meat more potable. Either way, a fair was clearly involved. The Aztec emperor, Montezuma, once declared the divine drink, chocolate, which builds up resistance and fights fatigue. A cup of this precious drink permits a man to walk for a whole day without food. This man was consuming more sugar than a middle school sleepover. But while we eat chocolate in many different ways today, the first form of chocolate was a drink. And when Spanish royalty got their hands on the drink from their conquests of the Americas in the 1500s, they also enjoyed chocolate in a liquid form. It wasn't until 1847 that Joseph Fry figured out how to turn cocoa powder and sugar into a paste, which could be formed into a bar, and the chocolate bar was born. However, the original chocolate bar was made of bittersweet chocolate, so you might not love it. Luckily, the bitter chocolate years didn't last too long before Henry Nestle and Daniel Peter invented milk chocolate with the addition of evaporated milk. You probably won't guess it, but as a 3,700-year-old recipe, pot pie is one of the oldest dishes known to civilization. The Mesopotamians dined on the dish way back in 1700 BCE, and though it didn't make it into his eponymous epic, we're going to assume Gilgamesh loved the stuff. However, ancient Mesopotamian pot pie was a little different than today's. For example, while the modern version favors meat fillings like chicken or turkey, they generally used meat from smaller birds, although we're not sure what kind. The meat from these birds was cooked in a spicy sauce, along with their gizzards, liver, and hearts. This gravy-like meat concoction was then baked in a crust flavored with various spices, and a pre-baked crust was placed atop the dish before serving. Historians have found evidence of over 800 unique Mesopotamian food items, including 300 different types of bread alone. So, not a good place to visit unless you're taking a carb holiday. Tacos, as we generally think of them today, are actually a relatively new creation, but people in Mexico have been eating a version of the popular handheld for centuries. Early tacos consisted of flat corn tortillas that had fillings like fish and cooked animal organs. They don't have anything quite like it at Taco Bell yet, but a chicken gizzarito can't be far away. The modern taco's origin isn't incredibly clear, but it seems to have been created by some miners in Mexico in the 18th century. Back then, the word taco referred to the small pieces of paper the miners would fill with gunpowder and then stick in a hole to access the ore. Ooh, they should put that on the menu. Sandwiches seem like such a basic and ubiquitous idea that it's weird to think there might have been a person who actually invented them. But according to legend, the British Earl of Sandwich created the sandwich way back in the 1700s so he could eat while playing cards, and that's why it's named after him today. It's a fun story, but it's probably not true, because sandwiches have existed since at least 110 BCE. Records show that a Jewish rabbi called Hillel the Elder used to encourage the eating of bitter herbs between unleavened matzah bread during Jewish Passover. 
He had a very specific reason for this combination as well. The herbs represented the bitterness of slavery, while the matzah breads symbolized the flatbreads Israelites baked quickly before fleeing Egypt. Also, he wanted to open a chain of subways in ancient Jerusalem, and he needed to have something to sell. Halal's version might sound a little bizarre, but over the millennia, the sandwich grew closer to the staple we know today. And by the time the Earl of Sandwich started dealing deli slices in the 1700s, the modern version was pretty much in place, as evidenced by a recipe that describes a sandwich as having a bit of cold meat. Arby's would like a word. We have the meat. So the Earl might not have invented the sandwich, but he sure managed to get it named after himself. The popular Indian dish curry is known for being spicier than Rocky Horror Picture Show star Tim Curry. But the word curry is an interesting term, because while it's a popular name for certain kinds of Indian food in the United States and the UK, it's a relatively unused term in India. That's because curry didn't originate from one specific Indian dish. Instead, it's believed to have derived from the Tamil term for sauce, and it appeared around the time Portuguese explorers visited India. At the time, a popular dish was called vindaloo, which contained 20 types of pepper, pork, and vinegar. Today, curry is a broad term that generally refers to a dish with sauce or gravy, spice optional. Today, sushi is a dish that is mostly known for its elegant, meticulous preparation, and for that episode of The Simpsons where Homer eats the wrong kind and it nearly kills him. You have 24 hours to live. 24 hours? Well, 22. I'm sorry I kept you waiting so long. Although most people assume sushi is a Japanese dish, the first evidence of sushi comes to us from over 2,000 years ago in China. Like many Japanese cultural staples, sushi originated in China sometime between 500 and 200 BCE. And it wasn't created to be a fancy meal for your prom date. Sushi was a dish born of sheer practicality. Back then, sushi consisted of fermented rice and salted fish. The fermentation process and the heavy salting of the fish helped the rice keep longer. Remember, this isn't the time before refrigerators, so if you didn't want to starve, you needed to get creative. Perhaps even more surprising was the fact that traditionally, you weren't supposed to eat the rice. It was actually only used to store the fish. When it came time to eat, the rice was simply tossed out. Today, that's considered a cruel prank. When most people think of lasagna, they probably think of Garfield or middle school birthday dinners at the Olive Garden. Recipes for modern lasagna tend to have a few standard main ingredients, including pasta, ricotta cheese, and tomato sauce. But the ancient Romans had a dish they called lasagna too, and that is not what they were eating. In fact, tomatoes weren't even introduced to Italy until sometime between the 16th and 19th centuries. Instead, the original lasagna was called patina quotidiana and was a flatbread with meat and or fish and cheese layered throughout. Even the traditional lasagna of Naples looked very different from the one we're used to. This dish is made with sausage, fried meatballs, hard-boiled eggs, ricotta or mozzarella cheese, and Neapolitan ragu, which is a meat and tomato sauce, and also what Garfield leaves in his litter box. So what do you think? Which of these OG dishes sounds the tastiest? Let us know in the comments below, and while you're at it, check out some of these other weird history food videos.